Yes, I knew. Yes, you are. Relax. Calm down. Take a breath. I shall. Okay. I've taken my breath. I'm ready to get started, my friends. I'm excited because this is the beginning of a new math video. Welcome, my friends, to fifth grade. We're looking at lesson 1.3. Ooh, it's algebra. Yes, I love algebra. Now, let's take a look at our topic today. It looks like we're going to be talking about properties. Yay! I always wanted to buy some real estate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mr. Warren, we're talking about properties and math. Hey, I knew that. Hey, hey. So let's go ahead and get started here with the essential question. That is our learning target. Our essential question states, how can you use properties of operations to solve problems? Woo, yeah. I like this. Now, you can use the properties of operations to help you evaluate numerical expressions more easily. All right. Let's go ahead and look at some of these. First, we have the properties of addition. It says we have the commutative property of addition. It says, this defines it, if the order of add-ins changes, the sum stays the same. And if you look at our example over there, we have 12 plus 7 equals 7 plus 12. So, first of all, add-ins are just those numbers that we use to add together to give us a sum. So, the 12 is an add-in, the 7 is an add-in. And it says if the order changes, so if you look at the example, the 12 and the 7 have been reversed. First we had the 12 plus 7, now we have the 7 plus 12. This property only states that when that happens, that it's still going to have the same sum. That's the, the commutative property of addition, and that's basically it. Pretty simple. Some people think of it the switcheroo property. There's different ways you can try to remember. I just happen to remember it as a commutative property, but hey, if that helps you, the old switcheroo property of addition... By all means, use whatever you can to remember this property. Okay, the next one we have the associative property of addition. It states if the grouping of add-ins changes, the sum stays the same. The grouping is the key word, grouping. And usually when we see the grouping, you'll see like in our example, we have 5 plus, and then we have the sum of 8 and 14. Okay, that's how we state that in parentheses. So the sum of 8 and 14 plus 5. Well, look what happened when we said that that's equal to. Now we have the sum of 5 and 8 plus 14. So they grouped the 8 and the 14 together first, but then they decided to group the 5 and the 8 together. They say if you do that, it's okay. That's right. The sum will stay the same. All right, so you don't have to worry. You know what? Nobody's going to say, hey, you can't do that. No, they won't say that because you'll say, you know what? I had the associative property of addition backing me up, okay? So I know I'm all right. All right, next we have the identity property of addition. Identity, who am I? That's right. That's what I think of it as is identity property of addition says the sum of any number and zero is that number. You can't change me. <laughs> 13 plus zero? Yeah, I'm still 13. It seems kind of simple because you're looking at it going, Mr. War, that's really obvious, 13 plus 0 equals 13. But it's important that you know this property because you'll be using it later in your educational career. Okay, now let's look at properties of multiplication. Properties of multiplication are similar. They really are, except that we're multiplying. Before we were adding, now we're multiplying. It says the commutative property of multiplication simply states if the order of factors, notice, factors changes, the product stays the same. We're just using big fancy words, right? We were using add-ins, now we're using factors because factor times a factor equals a product. And then you can see the product stays the same. Look at four times nine is equal to nine times four. Nothing changed, okay? It's still the same product because four times, well, four times nine is 36. So even if you reverse those two factors, doing the little switcheroo, you still end up with 36. The associated property of multiplication, same thing. If the grouping of factors changes, the product stays the same. Go ahead and look at our example. What did they do? They grouped the three and the six first, then they grouped the 11 and the three. Doesn't change the product at all the associative property. It's like you're almost associating. I kind of think of like associating the three and the six together and then the 11 and the three. That's why it's called the associative property. Okay, it has to do with grouping, how you group the terms, okay? Now we have the identity property again. The product of any number and one is that number. Notice we're not using zero now, but when you multiply any number by one, it just gives you that number. And they say, hey, I stay the same. Four times one equals four. Three million four hundred eighty thousand times one, right, is equal to three million four hundred eighty thousand. It doesn't change anything. Okay, so those are the properties, and that's what our focus is on our learning target today. 
But of course, we can't do any of this unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because you know what? It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yes, and it says the table shows the number of bones in several parts of the human body. Whoa, cool. What is the total number of bones in the ribs, the skull, and the spine? <laughs> I love these real-world problems. Okay, it does say to find the sum of add-ins using mental math, you can use the commutative and associative properties, right? Because that's our focus. So I'm going to look over at our table here. Cool, ankle seven. Ribs, 24. Wow. Skull is 28, and the spine is 26. Wow, there's a number of bones there. Amazing. Okay, now it does say use properties to find 24 plus 28 plus 26. In the example they give us there, you see the 24 and the 28, they're highlighted. Okay, and then the 26 is black, so then they have 28. So what do they do? It looks like they're switching this around a little bit wonder why they would do that. Hmm, there must be a reason. Ah, maybe because of compatible numbers. So let's go ahead and I'm thinking we're going to be using the commutative property. So therefore, I'm going to be putting the 24 there. Now it says use the, and I'm going to go ahead and write that in, the commutative. Didn't really fit in my line that nice, but there it is. And I can see the reason why that's going to be important is because 24 and 26, see the 4 and the 6, they're compatible. See, I like that. By the way, when we group those two together, suddenly we have the associative that's right oh my goodness i could almost hear you shouting through the screen my woohoo and that makes it so much easier because 24 and 26 compatible gives us 50 doesn't it it sure does it's almost like you're taking one from the 26 to add to the 24 so that we have two 25s use mental math to add so now it's really easy because we're just going 78 so there are 78 bones in the ribs, the skull, and the spine. That's a lot of bones. Uh, last time I checked, I seem to remember that the human body has like 206 or 207, something like that. And that the majority of them are actually in the hands and the feet. And there's a whole bunch of them there. Anyway, mathematical practices. Explain why grouping 24 and 26 makes the problem easier to solve. And this is the main reason right there, mental math. It makes it easier because the 6 and the 4 are compatible. It makes a 10. I learned that in second grade. And you know what? It even comes in handy in fifth grade, right? Woohoo! Okay, let's go to the next page. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, now we have the distributive property. Oh, look, look at that. It's even highlighted. Must be important. Actually, this property is so important, I'm going to put a star by it. That's right. When I think of all the math I've been teaching probably in the last 20 years, there's a lot of important things. But this one, oh my goodness, this is like really important. I thought I used to have my bell here. Where's my bell? You like that, huh? Yeah, that's my bell. That's my bell. Whenever I do that bell, it means like, well, basically means something really important is going to happen. Or I'm really trying to emphasize I want you to focus, okay? It says that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add-in by the number and then adding the products. I know, you're thinking, Mr. Wara? That hardly made sense. I know, but let's break it down. Multiplying a sum by a number. This is what we have right here. We have seven and nine is a sum. Because when we add 7 and 9 together, that's going to give us a sum. So multiplying a sum by a number, and that number happens to be 5, is the same as, key words there, is the same as, multiplying each add-in by the number and then adding the products. So that means that that's the same as if we multiply 5 and the 7 first and then add the multiplying the 5 of the 9. Look, at that's exactly what we did here. We multiplied the 5 and the 7, so the number was being multiplied by each add-in. The 7 was an add-in, and the 9 was an add-in. So that would be the same thing. That's what the distributive property is all about. Okay. And I know we're going to get some examples down below, so let's go ahead and keep moving along. It says the distributive property can also be used with multiplication and subtraction. For example, you can take 2 times, right? The difference of 10 and 8 is equal to... 2 times 10, or I should say the, the product of 2 and 10, minus the product of 2 and 8. That's how we say that. You get used to hearing that because later you're going to have to write numerical expressions, and it's good that you understand the words connected with that. Okay, example one. Woohoo! Use the distributive property to find the product. Yes, use addition. Oh, this is so exciting. And they're giving us little helpful notes along the side. Yeah! Okay, 
One way, use addition. So we have 8 times 59. And it says that's equal to 8 times, and look, we have a blank plus 9. Hmm, could I possibly just say, you know what, that is the same as just putting a 50 in there? Because 50 plus 9 is 59. Okay, so I've kind of made that match. Woohoo! Now it looks like we're using, oh, here it says, oh, I didn't even look at this. Use a multiple of 10 to write 59 as a sum. Okay, a multiple of 10, and that's what we did. A multiple of 10 means 10, 20, 30, right? Now it says use the distributor property. Cool. All right, so we're going to have something times 50, and that's going to be our number here, our factor. So since we're taking 8 times 59, we're going to do 8 times 50, then 8 times 9. See, and those are each one of those add. This was an add in here, and this was the add in, and this was the number that we were multiplying by the 8. See, that's the same. Now it makes it much easier because 8 times 50, well, that's 400. We can just use mental math. This is handy. This is when you don't have a calculator. 8 times 9, of course, is 72. Those are your basic math facts you should have memorized by fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Come on, okay. If you don't have those memorized, get them memorized. And then, of course, we are just going to use mental math to add because 400 plus 72 is just 472. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. That was so easy. Let's do another. Now it says another way. Use subtraction. Cool. So we have the same number. Look at that. Now it says use a multiple of 10 to write 59 as a difference. Okay. So here we have 8 times blank minus 1. Well, to get that 59 value in there, we'd have to have 60 here. 60, because 60 minus 1 is 59. Ah, oh, this is really sneaky. I like how they're doing this. Now it says use the distributor property just like we did before. So we're going to take our 8, again, times 60 minus 8 times, right, 1. So now it says use mental math to multiply. Well, this is nice because that's 480 woo minus, and then we have 8, because 8 times 1 is 8. Now we're just going to subtract. We're going to have 472. Still works out the same. How nice. It's kind of almost a way of checking our work. Cool. Now let's look at example two. Complete the equation and tell which property you used. You okay, have A. So I see 23 times something equals 23. I like that. Think. Think. A number times one is equal to itself. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple. They just kind of gave us the answer there. So this is the identity. Who am I? I am me. Identity property and and this is of multiplication. Cool. All right. Now B says 47 times 15 is equal to 15 times 47. <laughs> yep. It's just the order change, right? The order of the factors does not change the product. Okay. And it could make that any easier. And of course, that is the commutative. Commutative. I always try to sneak an N in there. It just seems more natural to say commutative, but commutative property of, and we are multiplying, so it's going to be a multiplication again. Okay, anything exciting down here? Is this math talk? Hey, explain how you could find the product three times 299 by using mental math. We're just looking at it. I'm not going to write these notes, so I will just say that first of all, 299 is so close to 300, isn't it? Wouldn't it just be easier to say, hey, three times the difference of 301. So you'd end up with this problem that would be 3 times 300 minus 1. See? And then that way you could multiply this first, giving you 900, right? And then we're going to subtract. And then you're going to get 3 times 1, which is 3. And then you would just end up with 897. Sure, hope that's right. Mr. War, you should check your work. Okay, let's check our work up here. 299 times 3, dun, 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 7, carry the 2, 27, that's 29, that means carry the 2, and 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 2, okay, I'm just having some fun, 897, woohoo, yeah, yeah, Ooh, I'd love to love making that, oh, that arrow, what happened, oh, it's like you smacked into a wall, and it went, bink, hey, Mr. Ward's just having way too much fun, oh, no, you know what I've never, ever done before in a video, just come by and say, you know what, let's color, ah! Oh my goodness, that was fun. You know what? I've never done that before. Hey, I know, I hear the music. It's jam time. You know what? We're going to just throw some bumper music in there as we say, you know what, my friends? Another video here and gone. Now, as I always say, live long and prosper.